Hi everyone! Microsoft Teams Town Hall is here, the replacement for Teams Live event. This is a new experience to host and deliver large-scale internal or external events to create connections across an organization. Town Halls will provide a one-to-many format with advanced production capabilities and a structured approach for attendee engagement. With Town Halls, customers can host various type of internal as well as external events, including company-wide town halls, all hands, global teams meetings, internal broadcast, fireside chats, and more. There are many benefits. Let's explore everything about it. Here I am in the new version of Microsoft Teams. Let's start to create a new town hall meeting. To do that, I'm going to open calendar and then in the drop down in the upper right corner, I'm going to target town hall, produce event for large audience. This is the use case. Now I have this pop up that's, that opens and you may notice that I have disabled meeting options, timing, emails and reports. Before to see all these options, you have to save your event. So let's say that the title would be Q3 Town Hall and then let's select a date will be Friday and the time would be 2 p.m. 3 p.m. The day it's, it's okay. Now you can see the icon time zone. You can even configure the time zone which is more suitable for you. And then the description. Let's write something here as well. All right, Q3 Town Hall, let's give you the full overview and let's scroll a little bit down. I am the organizer. This is an important role because it's the only one which is able to create the event and configure everything, timing, emails, reports, and then publish. You may notice that I have these functions disabled, meeting options, timing, emails, and reports. The full capabilities are available once you save this event. Now let me add a core organizer, in my case would be a Delevance, and now I have to specify the presenter. Presenter is me, Giuliano, and then Adele Vance again. And finally you have even the option to add an external presenter. So I have a guest which is going to deliver the town hall. Let me add the right email. Okay, I added the external user as well. Now another important aspect to consider if you want to make this event public or you want to deliver it just for your organization. Let's keep it with this function turned on and finally invite attendees. Now this is gonna target the entire company and for that reason I created a group, a dynamic group in my Active Directory which is everyone internal users. Finally, the, the other option that you have is only allow invited people to join. I want to turn on this of course. And finally we have attendee experience. This is also important to consider that every attendee will have the camera and the mic off, disabled. All right, it's pretty good to go, but before to save, because if you save, you are going to send immediately this event to everyone. So what I need to do is keep the attendees blank for that, for that initial uh, setup and let's save the event. Now I'm sure that the first email is sent only to the people that are here, that are added here, Adele and this external user. Changing now perspective, let me open the view of Adele events. We can see that Adele has got this email. And this is very important because I sent the email just to my core worker. This is the first draft of this event. All right, let's go back to the team. And now what I have here is the ability to set additional options. For example, external presenters, 
But before to do it, you have the ability to set meeting options. Okay, let me open the meeting options before to do it. Let me open the right browser instance so I can jump immediately on the right one. Let me click on meeting options and this is this experience opens in the, in the browser and you can see all uh, options available for this Q3 town hall. I have people dialing in can bypass the lobby, announce when people dialing in uh, join or leave and so on. Many of these options are disabled because of the nature of this of this event. Okay, let's say that it's fine. All good from a meeting options perspective. Let's start to fill out every new capability. So here we have the external presenter. This is just a summary. I have one external presenter and we are going to send a unique join link to him in this case to join this event. All right, then we have theming. I can also start to do this. So this is, if I click on unique join link, I can see immediately the link and I can share this link uh, with this directly user, even if uh, this user has already got an email. Now let's jump in theming. And what I can do here is change, for example, this banner image. Let's go on the proper link, choose another image and I can target another one, for example, let's say this, uh, this one. Let's click on open. And now I have this nice picture. I can, uh, I can uh, use this uh, slider if I want to change the zoom and it's fine. So I'm going to click on save and now this new banner image will be saved. All right, let's select a logo here as well. Let me target change another and let's uh, let's select an image that I already have here. For example, this one, nice logo. Let's click on save. There we go. And then the temp color, which is my favorite color, orange. All right. So here, as you may notice that I have this reminder that your organization's privacy statement is not configured in Azure Active Directory, reach out to your IT admin. This is also good to configure so you can provide the privacy statement for uh, this event. All right, this is now also properly set up. And now another important aspect are emails. You are going to send two emails, the first one to invite attendees and the second one when the recording is available. So let's set up the first one. If I click on edit, you can see this dynamic parameter event name. This would be Q3 Town Hall. It is exactly the name of this event. If you remove this, of course, it will be a static parameter. Let's keep dynamic. I can, I can see the logo here. And then this is a preview of my email. I have all this information in the body. I have you are invited to the event name. This is also dynamic as value. Event date and time range, event description and event organization. You can override all these parameters if you want by writing whatever you want. And then below we have email footer. This is the name, the tenant name of my organization. This event is powered by Microsoft Teams and so on. You have the ability to preview this email. As you can see, this is how the my email will looks like once it's sent through all attendees. All right, let's cancel. Now it looks pretty good to me and uh, I can open now the event recording available. So let's see the, the email. In this case, we have recording of the name of the event is now available. We have the logo and all other information that are, are already available and set up before. Here you can add, uh, as always, your uh, description, your custom description if you want. Let's keep it as is. It looks uh, all uh, good and nice. I can cancel here as well. And these two other and additional options are filled out once the meeting and the event is ended. All right, now that you are ready to publish everything, now it's time to add the, the attendees. 
So you have to go here down in the invite attendees and now it's time to add attendees. In my case, all are all internal users of my organization worldwide. Okay, and now I can click on the button publish. I can save and publish. And now I'm going to send this event through the organization. And here we go from an attendee perspective. I have, I am Patty Fernandez in this case, and I just received this email, the email that we have configured before. I have, you are invited to Q3 Town Hall, and I have the date, the information. I can join the event directly from here, or I can click on yes to participate to this event. And now this is saved in my calendar. So if I go here, I have Town Hall available. All right. Now from a co-organizer perspective, I got the same, uh, in the same experience, this email. I can click on yes to participate, to take part of this event. Let me go now as a Dell Events, which is the co-organizer of this event in the calendar. Now I can open the Town Hall and here, this is the event. I can click on manage event if I want. And here as a co-organizer, I can change all options that are available for the, for the author of this event. I can change the, the banner, for example, of the image, but I can, uh, you see the description here as a co-organizer, you can manage the event, but can edit the info of this page. I can change uh, other minimal stuff like the email, I can take care of about the reports and recordings. This is for a co-organizer user experience. All right, it's time to join this event and let's see all capabilities during the meeting. I started my meeting and from an attendee perspective, I have this, this description, this meeting hasn't yet started. If I open Microsoft Teams, I can see that I have this button available, start meeting. This gives you the chance to set up all stuff, turn on your camera, your micro and, and so on. On the upper left corner, I have the attendee that are awaiting the, the event. Okay, let's click now on the button start meeting. And now this meeting uh, will start. All right, I, I started this meeting and if I change perspective, all right, now the description is changed. I have the person speaking isn't sharing video. So let me open again Microsoft Teams and here I need to share my, my video. I can, uh, for example, share my screen and now I'm presenting and sharing something. In the presenter, I have the ability to switch camera if I want. I can bring on screen, so bring myself on the screen. Let me stop sharing, for example, and I am on the screen. If you don't need to share your screen, you can share yourself. And now I'm, I'm presenting. Let, let's see from an attendee perspective. There is some delay here. Let's wait that the, the screen updates. Here we go, from an attendee's perspective, you can see the screen sharing over your desktop and then on the right, the view of the presenter or the full screen of the presenter. It's up to you how you want to deliver this event. All right, now I can deliver this town hall. I can talk about the Q3 of our organization and so on. I, there is all, only the question and answer capability here for this event. Many all other feature are not available and you can uh, set the language and the speech. If you want, you can turn on uh, live captions, turn on a speaker coach, you can share your screen and this are the, you can recording this is start, start automatically. I have stopped recording and then start transcription if you want. I am back to my Microsoft Teams calendar. Let's double click on Q3 Town Hall. And if I click on Manage Event, I have now the ability to show you the last two features, Reports and Recordings. Clicking on Reports, I will have now an overview about the session that I delivered. Meeting duration, average attendance time, start and end date time. I have the list of participants. And finally, I have Recordings. 
Now, this is not yet published yet, but the video is ready. As you can see here, I have the preview. I can click on it if I want and rewatch the session. Here I have the preview of my email. Let's click again on this one so I can see the email that will be sent once I publish this video. Thank you for attending Q3 Town Hall. A recording of the video is ready to view. You can edit the email, you can change whatever you want, but I am now ready to publish this. I can confirm by publishing this and now another email will be sent to all participants informing them that the video, the recording video is now ready. All right, we have seen in this video Microsoft Teams, Town Hall and how to use it. If you enjoyed this video, as always, please consider to subscribe, like, add a comment down below, let me know what do you think about Teams Town Hall. I hope to see you next time. Bye.